not support uh, recreational use of marijuana being legal in the state of Louisiana. I do support and did vote for last year what has become known as the Allison Neustrom Act, where we're going to have a real way to implement what has already been legal and has been legal for a number of years, but we never had the rulemaking authority in place to make it readily available. And so we're going to move forward with medicinal use of marijuana when prescribed by a doctor uh, to treat uh, certain conditions such as glaucoma, glaucoma or people who are undergoing uh, tr cancer treatments and spastic quadriplegia. And I would hope that very soon the pharmacists and the doctors will agree that medicinal marijuana can be used to treat children with diabetic, I'm sorry, with seizure disorders because we know that that is a tremendous problem affecting a, a number of our children in this state. And we have parents moving out of state to avail themselves of what their doctors are telling them they need for their children. We shouldn't make them do that. Senator Vitter, your thoughts? Scott, you know, the founders considered the states to be laboratories of democracy. They wanted states to see how different laws worked out and all of us to learn from each other. I think in this case, we're going to learn a lot about the trouble states like Colorado, Oregon, and others get into through this wide open legalization. I have extreme concerns about that sort of legalization. I also have concerns even about the modest law that John Bell Edwards and the legislature passed a few months ago. I've read that law. It's riddled with problems. He actually touched on one of them just a minute ago. A doctor has to prescribe medical marijuana. Guess what? Uh, that's grounds for a doctor losing his license. That's the sort of um, dysfunction that too often comes out of Baton Rouge, including with regard to this issue. We need to back up and be very careful. Finally, I have it on good authority that the FDA may be approving pills nationally that have the same benefits for people with serious and, and real medical conditions. And I think depending on their expertise is far uh, more prudent than uh, passing the sort of legislation that okay, John you. Bell Edwards and other di others did in Baton Rouge. Quickly, for the record, so you do not support legalization of marijuana no. in any way, shape, or form? I do not. Okay. Lieutenant Governor Darden. I do not support legalization of marijuana for recreational purposes. Louisiana has had a law in the books for a number of years that would authorize medical marijuana to be used, but there were never any procedural mechanisms put in place to, to implement that. The legislature in the last session, as you've heard, has done that. I think that was an appropriate law to pass. I do think we ought to attempt to try and provide opportunities for medical marijuana to be used in extreme cases based upon a doctor's prescription and based upon a licensed pharmacist responsible for dispensing uh, that medication. Uh, it's not going to be obviously in grass form that could be smoked. It's going to be in some other form. And the problem right now is neither Tulane or LSU, who are the entities authorized to be the distribution agent, want to fool with it and want to want to get involved in it right now. So this obviously is a law that's going to have to be modified in some respect. Nothing's going to happen on it. I don't think until I'm governor and we've got a new legislature and we'll look very carefully at that law, make the changes that are appropriate, and and proceed. Mr. Deaton. <clears throat> With respect to medical marijuana, I, uh, once I'm elected governor, I would like to appoint a committee of uh, many, many of the uh, medical community, uh, the Louisiana medical community, ad to advise me of the viability of that and uh, the reality of how it does genuinely assist, for example, cancer uh, patients and all. Uh, with respect to recreational uh, marijuana, I'm against it. And let me point out one thing. I'm the only former prosecutor up here. I have put people away for, for uh, drug use. Not a one of these people have. I know what's involved, uh, and I, I feel that background, having worked for Mr. Harry Connick here in New Orleans for a couple of years, should assist me uh, when I'm governor of Louisiana. Do you think, uh, following up to that, do you think that sometimes the sentences for minor drug offenders are too harsh compared to people who commit murder? Well, certainly, uh, a murder is more dramatic or more serious than uh, drug use, uh, initial drug use. I believe that there are certain uh, circumstances where perhaps, uh, you know, in a three strikes you're out situation, a minor use of uh, marijuana shouldn't result in a long sentence. So, uh, 
Personally, I agree with that, but uh, I would say as an attorney and as a former prosecutor, drug, ne drug use needs to be controlled. We need to work closely with Washington, D.C. to bring in the technology because drug use is not necessarily a uh, local problem. It is international in scope, similar to the oil business. And we need to, as was done when Mark Morial was mayor of New Orleans, he brought in uh, Chief Pennington from Washington, D.C. with his technological background and cut the murder rate in half. One of the best administrative uh, decisions I have ever seen by a government official. Thank you, Mr. Deaton. Scott, uh, if I can respond to that separate question, I certainly, 30 seconds. I certainly agree that we jail way too many nonviolent, very low-level folks who have a drug problem, not drug dealing, but a drug problem. And I have specific proposals in my detailed plan together, Louisiana Strong, invite folks to go to davidvetter.com, take a look, that will change that. We warehouse way too many individuals in Louisiana. Violent criminals is one thing, but that's completely separate and different. Okay, Commissioner Argel, you'll wrap this question up. Yes. I am absolutely opposed to the recreational use of marijuana. I am in lockstep with our sheriffs, with our judges, our district attorneys, and our chiefs of police on opposition to recreational use of marijuana. I do believe the time has come for us to look at the medical use of marijuana in very restrictive purposes. You know, when I think of some of the drugs that we have already legalized in America, morphine, Lortab, very, very serious drugs that can be controlled through a process. I believe in very limited situations through the use of a doctor's prescription that there is a way for us to use medical marijuana in a way to treat patients who cannot get perhaps comfort in other ways. So I would support that. I think there's ways we need to tweak the laws that we have since adopted. And uh, I'm looking forward to working with the legislature because this, I think, is time has come. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Argel. Uh, one last s discussion on this topic. We talked about the 53 million that has been raised in, Cal in Colorado in the first year. We know about the $1.6 billion budget deficit that Louisiana faces. Other states have done this to address budget woes. So. If you are against this, and roughly we have half the population of Colorado, so maybe another 25 million a year coming from something like that as people from other states visit here, what is a serious and meaningful step that you can take to address this, the, the state's budget woes? And we'll begin with whoever raises their hand first. Uh, uh, Mr. Vitter. I believe if you look at Colorado's experience over just a few years, you're going to see the social costs they face balloon and um, make that revenue pall by comparison. You need to look at revenue. You also need to look at cost. And I think they're going to face enormous cost in the criminal justice system in terms of greater addictions, social issues. So you need to look at both. With regard to our serious budget woes, uh, they are serious. We're in a crisis. We should be acting right now, not simply waiting for early next year. But I have a concrete plan to call a special session to address those directly, and I'll do that uh, with force and leadership. Does anybody else have a concrete plan they'd like to talk about? Well, State Representative Edwards. All, Scott, I'll get you, to you too in a second. You, you talked about 53 million. And this is a 30 dollars. second response question. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's very interesting to know that had we expanded the Medicaid program in Louisiana this year, that's exactly how much the state budget would have saved by bringing our tax dollars back to Louisiana so that the working poor here can get cared for in our hospitals, our clinics, by our doctors. Instead of our dollars going to Washington and then being redirected to the 30 states that did expand the Medicaid program using our dollars for their working poor. We would have saved $53 million. And this is not a partisan issue. It's not right versus left. It's right versus wrong. Of the 30 states that have expanded the Medicaid program, 14 have Republican governors. We need to do it in Louisiana. Okay, Lieutenant Governor Darden. You can't put a financial picture on this if you wanted to legalize marijuana, if you wanted to expand gambling. Some may want to legalize prostitution in Louisiana. That's not what we ought to be doing. That's not what we ought to be looking at. We have to look at other alternatives to raise money or decide how much money we need to have to operate government. And there's still some room to make cuts and do other things. And that's what I've proposed doing. And then determining what revenue sources may be appropriate. I think we start with the $7.5 billion in exemptions and credits and exclusions that are in state law that compares with an $8.9 billion state general fund budget. We're almost 
not collecting as much as we're actually collecting. Thank you. And we can go to your website to read the rest. Mr. Deaton. Okay, thank you, Scott. Uh, the other day I read in the Wall Street Journal that Goldman Sachs, which is the marquee investment banking firm in uh, Ma Manhattan, said that the price of oil could go down to $20 a barrel. It's at currently quoted at $45 a barrel. At $20 a barrel, our young people leave this area and go to Atlanta, Houston, Dallas, and other parts of the country because they can't find jobs around here. What we need to do is diversify the, uh, the economy around here. We don't need to uh, uh, invest in a gateway drug like marijuana. We need to invest and work with our delegation to get more SBA loans. Uh, for you. our small businesses. But don't go anywhere. You're up first for this next question. Oh, thank, you. thank you for that topic. That was good. The controversial Common Core Educational Standard has divided the state and the nation. Currently, a majority of states, including Louisiana, have adopted Common Core, with three states withdrawing from the standard. Mr. Deaton, this is a 30 second response for everybody. This is a 30 second question. What is your view on Common Core, and should Louisiana withdraw from the standard? I'm in favor of Common Core. I agree with uh, the Lieutenant Governor. I believe he has said he is in favor of it. I've read that in the paper. I agree with it. I do not feel Louisiana citizens, Louisiana students should be put at a disadvantage to students in other parts of the country. I know how talented uh, people are in this state. I've attended LSU, UNO, and Tulane Law School. And I know we can compete with others, so I don't want to put us at a disadvantage. I'm in favor of Common Core. Lieutenant Governor Darden? I didn't think it was appropriate to withdraw from Common Core after since 2010 teachers and students had been gearing up for those tests and following those tests. So I thought it was inappropriate in the middle of the, uh, the process to try and stop it. I said at one of the very earliest forums that we've had in this race that I thought there would be a, a middle ground reached and proposed at the legislature. And that's what happened. There's a, a, the opponents and the proponents came together and have crafted a very appropriate plan that is going to allow us to look at those standards, determine what's right about them, what's wrong about them, what needs to be changed. And I think we'll proceed from there. And we all, I think, can agree we ought to have high standards in Louisiana. And we ought not be afraid to say that. And we ought not retreat from that. Senator Vitter, you've been attacked on this issue because you've been on both sides of the issue. Where do you stand today on Common Core? Well, Scott, I've said I favor rigor, standards, accountability, always have, always will. But it shouldn't be under the Common Core umbrella. And I've been very clear, including with detailed proposals, that we're going to get out of Common Core, we're going to get out of the park test. Now, Jay mentioned this process that was initiated in the last legislative session. It could lead to a good result, but quite frankly, the early indication is that it's headed to Common Core by another name. I think one big difference between the two of us is Jay would embrace that. I would veto that. We're going to get out of Common Core. We're going to get out of the park test. Well, quick follow up on that. What made you go from supporting Common Core to being vehemently against Common Core? Well, first of all, I was always focused on rigor, standards, accountability, and still am. Uh, but I listened to parents. I listened to teachers. I did a lot of that traveling the state, and I heard over and over and over that Common Core inserts federal bureaucrats and national elites way too much into Louisiana education, and that it's actually developmentally inappropriate in many cases. And I talked to a lot of parents and teachers who walked me through that in very clear ways from their own experience, dealing with their kids, trying to do homework with their kids. So we're going to get out of Common Core and the park test, but maintain standards, rigor, and accountability. Thank you, Senator. State Representative Edwards. I have been consistently and from the beginning against the wholesale adoption of Common Core standards in the state of Louisiana. Common Core does not have a monopoly on rigor and on high standards. And in fact, no standards should be implemented in Louisiana that have not been thoroughly and properly vetted here in our state by our parents and our educators, including those in higher education. That has always been my position. That was my position in 2014 when I voted for a bill that would have done that. Unfortunately, we lost an entire year. We came back in 2015 and finally passed a bill with that approach. I look forward to moving with the compromise that was reached so that we can adopt higher Louisiana standards in our schools, never to be assessed through the park. Thank test. you, State Representative Edwards. Commissioner Angel. 
Yes, I am the only Republican in this race that has consistently opposed Common Core. I didn't come to that conclusion lightly. I visited with school teachers and parents and school board members and superintendents, and I concluded that the very people that we would need to make Common Core work, our school teachers, were opposed to it. They didn't think it could work. So I have had that position from day one. This is where I di differ from Senator Vitter. Senator Vitter not only voted for the No Child Left Behind Act, which is viewed as the largest federal intrusion into local school governance, but he has been against Common Core, for it and against it. I don't know where he's going to be tomorrow, but I'm certain it will be different from where he is today. That is one thing that is certain. We can't trust David Vitter to handle our children's education. He has not only been wrong on fornication, he's been wrong on taxation, and he's been wrong on education.